Princess Olga grew up free to roam a 13th century English country estate. So an invitation to the lush hills of KZN was music to her ears. She was here to spread word about her book and as guest of honor at the relaunch of this lodge. I've just touched down at Karkhoff Safari Villas in gorgeous Peter Maritzburg. I mean, how lush and green is this place? I'm here to meet a very special guest, Her Highness Princess Olga Romanov. And you know what? It's not every day that you get to roll with royalty, but this is definitely going onto your bucket list. The Karkhoff surrounds were an inspiration to the princess. Her memoirs are in part to fund renovations of her family home at Provender House in Kent. Lorna met a no-nonsense royal who does not stand on ceremony. Her Highness Princess Olga Romanov, welcome to Top Billing. Thank you very much. And it is it's certainly an honour to be here. Let's talk about your amazing heritage. Your late father, Prince Andrei Alexandrovich, fled Russia during a very turbulent time. Where did he go and why? My grandmother, great-grandmother, my father and some of his siblings were all under house arrest in the Crimea in various palaces in Yalta. And then eventually King George V sends HMS Marlborough to pick them up and then they went straight to Paris and then to England. Can you kindly tell us about the various spellings of your surname? My father, when, after the revolution, and my grandmother, when they came to Britain, they changed the name from O-V to O-double-F, because apparently there were lots of Romanovs in Russia, and they thought that would take them off Stalin's hit list. Uh, but of course, I mean, most people knew that they were still the same family. Yeah. Did the people you were growing up with, so your peers and your friends, did they know that you were royalty? Um, the people I grew up with just took no notice. They didn't, they treated me just like they treated each other. And I didn't know any different, because that's, children don't. Can you speak any Russian? Uh, only three words. <laughs> because my father, although he spoke Russian to his first three children, yeah. who were already in their 30s when I was born, um, he never spoke Russian to me. Can you do a good Russian accent at least? No, not even that. I'm appalling with accent. I did years and years of French and not a word came out. Parle un petit peu français? No. No, <laughs> no I can say that. No. <laughs> do you ever feel any pressure to live up to people's expectations? No, never. I, I love just, that. I just do what I want to do. Am I allowed to high five you? <laughs> that, that was so cool. I really, really like that. I never, so. <laughs> never <laughs> bothered by that sort of thing. You, of course, in South Africa to launch your amazing book, A Wild and Barefoot Romanov. What was it like writing the book for the first time? I mean, you're a first time author. Was it a bit daunting at all? Well, no, not really, because you're just talking about yourself. I mean, it's childhood and, and all, the, all the memories of childhood. So yeah. it was actually quite easy because it's just you know, your own story. Any highlights of the book that you absolutely love and you want people to take from? That I'm totally wacky <laughs> and rather um, normal, but um, strange, I think. Princess Olga calls herself a wild and barefoot Romanov and loved the game drive experience. A mother of three and a grandmother, she's visited Cape Town for the wedding of her son, but this was new territory. What do you think stands out for you about South Africa that you have come to love in the few days you've been here? Well, Natal, I, I suspect, is rather unusual because it's so green, so lush, and it's so like Scotland, only lusher and greener and so beautiful. And everyone's been so charming to us. Yeah, yeah. And it's just so relaxing. The young Olga was educated at home by governesses, but like most children, preferred to be outside. To avoid homework, she'd saddle up her pony and ride out on the family estate. But she is a princess, and that's who Komoto Ndungane was preparing for. What was the inspiration for this particular venue? We are really hosting a princess today, so we had to come up with something that is of international standards. We've got the ochres, the gold is always so royal yeah. and prestigious. So uh, we've made use of certain elements that just brings about that royalty and luxury into Kartloof Safari Villas. Having rock keyboardist Neil Breitenbach of Prime Circle on piano fit the maverick style of the princess. Once seen as a potential bride for Prince Charles, she decided for herself who'd be on her dance card. 
the dinner party guests found her a revelation. Sashi, Ryan, so you both get to travel around the world all the time. How close have you been to royalty? I think this is probably the closest, but I've always had a fascination with the Russian dynasty. And have you met the princess yet, and what do you think? She is wonderful. We have met her. She's so down to earth, humble, beautiful lady. Yeah. I was going to say exactly the same. Again, not what you're expecting. So down to earth, approachable, super fun. It's been an absolutely amazing evening of just fine dining, beautiful company, great music. What has it been like for you? It has been, I guess, very, very, very informative. Just in the way that my understanding of humility, just being around the presence of, of royalty and just the, the, the level of hum humility that um, Princess Olga has, it's just such a great quality to possess as a human and it's great to learn that, something like that. The fact that we in the same atmosphere with such a powerful woman, Olga, like it means it's such a dream come true to be to be surrounded by power. Because that's you know, as a girl, you always dream of that. Yeah. One day I want to. Yeah, one be day I want to be a princess. <laughs> and now we're round one and having a dinner with a princess in Peter Maritzburg in South Africa. Hallelujah! <laughs> Thank you. <Father. laughs> Is it safe to say you'll come back to South Africa and this has become perhaps maybe not, maybe a third, fourth, but at least in the top ten? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I absolutely love it and I can't wait to come back next yeah. year. Her life stories are so fascinating that her book was being read before the evening was done. Friends were made and all look forward to her return.